because of that lack of rotation about the carbon-carbon double bond, that means that when you have a double bond in the middle of an alkyl chain, like in 2-butene, there's two possible isomers that can form. And they have the same relationship as when we had methyl groups that could be on the same side or the opposite side of a cyclohexane ring, like when we were discussing the dimethyl cyclohexanes back in Chapter 3. And at the time, we used cis and trans to distinguish those two possibilities. And so those terms pop up again. Cis means that we've got two groups on the same side of the double bond, like these two methyl groups. Or for that matter, these two hydrogens are cis relative to one another. Whereas in the trans isomer, the two methyl groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. And also the two hydrogens are on opposite sides, for that matter. The two... 1,2 dichloroethenes have that same type of relationship where we can have the chlorines that are said to be cis relative to each other again the same side relative to the double bond or those chlorines can be trans and the hydrogens are trans so this is used oftentimes whenever we have a double bond somewhere in the middle of an of a alkene chain uh, if this were one butene for example there would be no possibility of a cis or a trans isomer uh, because you'd have two identical hydrogens at one end of the double bond. And this works fine as long as the two groups around that double bond can kind of be put in pairs. In each of these molecules on this page, we've got two, two hydrogens that we can compare to one another, or the two methyl groups, or the two chlorines. But I made up a slide here to show how cis and trans doesn't work in all cases. And then I'll show you that next slide that shows an alternative to naming things as cis and trans. Um, take a look at these two molecules. I just made up this slide a few minutes ago. Uh, we've got four different atoms attached to the carbon-carbon double bond. And so if you look at these structures, it really wouldn't be possible to call either one of them cis or trans. And yet they are different isomers, and we need to have a different name for them. So the alternative, the more formal alternative to cis and trans, is to use a capital E or a Z in front of the name. And what we are doing here, as it says in blue, is we are ranking the atoms attached to the carbons with that double bond, and we're ranking them by atomic number. So we're comparing bromine and fluorine, and bromine has the high ranking because it's got an atomic number of 35 compared to 9 for fluorine. And on the other side, we're comparing hydrogen with an atomic number of just one to carbon, atomic number six. So the carbon outranks the hydrogen, and that's the basis for this high-low. And so when the two high-ranking substituents are on the same side of the double bond, you can say they're cis relative to each other, then we call that isomer Z. It uh, stands for the German word zusammen, which means together. And this other isomer is designated E. The letter E comes from the German word for opposite, which is entgegen. And what's opposite is the location of the two high-ranking substituents and the two low-ranking ones. So this kind of thing still works with anything that we would call cis and trans. But cis and trans are used wherever they are uh, appropriate. Uh, but when you start getting all four substituents to be four different things, it's not possible really to use cis and trans. So getting back to... Uh, our slides here. This, this next slide shows the same four molecules, but now they are redesignated re as either Z for together or E for opposite. And uh, it is true that things that are cis tend to correspond to Z and things that are trans tend to correspond to E, although that's not always the case. Uh, but the nice thing about the E and Z is that any alkene that has different isomers um, like these do, um, we can put an appropriate name with any of them. So you want to be able to either put a name with something labeled as E or Z or provide the appropriate letter if you're asked to, to name a structure, structure that you're looking at.